In this video, I'm bringing you the ultimate guide to create stunning, ultra-realistic, cinematic AI photos using mid-journey in minutes. We will unlock the doors of a new storytelling, utilizing the ultimate prompt structure that I've developed after long hours of testing different keyword combinations. You will master everything related with cinematic storytelling using mid-journey, including cinematic shot types, cameras, unique visual styles inspired by best filmmakers, historic films, dynamic action scenes and creating new cinematic universes from movies never written and shoot before. At the end of this video, I'll show you how to create a parallax effect like this for your mid-journey images using layer pics and I will show you a tool that allows us to enlarge and automatically fill our images without using Photoshop. This tool can instantly transform images from vertical to horizontal and it's completely free. Here are the prompt structures I recommend for cinematic AI photography. First one is basic and for people who wants to keep things simple. This prompt will create wonders for you, even though it's not full of words. The keyword, cinematic still or scene, is important as it prompts mid-journey, to interpret the image as a cinematic photo taken from an actual movie scene. After that, you need to describe the scene or subject for the creative direction you want to go. The aspect ratio of 16 to 9 is excellent for achieving cinematic looking images. Of course you can enrich this prompt by adding more words like ultra realistic, film grain, cinematic color grading, detailed faces, dramatic lighting. These will help mid journey to set the cinematic mood for your photos. If you want an advanced prompt for truly transformative cinematic design for your AI photos, you can use this structure. In this prompt we are using a combination of shot types, camera names with cinematic features, filmmakers with unique art style, and we are setting the tone with genre, year, emotion and lighting. I recommend using the style raw parameter to fully leverage the visual style elements we incorporate in the prompt, especially if you mention a camera name or director's name with a unique style. This will exclude standard mid-journey style elements and make the algorithm truly focus on your style keywords. Now, let's deep dive into every element one by one in our prompt to understand how these elements will elevate our AI photos to new cinematic heights. Starting with cinematic shot types. If you want to use any of the following shot types, include them in your prompts. Extreme long shot. This shot is taken from a great distance. The main purpose is to highlight the subject's surroundings, providing a sense of scale and geographical location. Long shot, this shot shows the entire subject along with its environment. Medium shot, this shot typically frames the subject from the waist up or chest up. It's often used in dialogue scenes in movies to show a subject along with some context of their surroundings. Close up shot, the subject takes up the full frame in this shot, usually focusing on the face for a person. This shot type emphasizes details and expressions, intensifying the emotions portrayed by the subject. Extreme close-up shot, this shot typically features a part of a person or an object, such as a person's eye or a detail on an item. It brings attention to a specific feature or detail, emphasizing its significance. Full shot, this shot typically frames the subject fully from head to toe, capturing the entire body within the scene. Sometimes it's hard to achieve this shot type in mid-journey so I recommend using additional words to ensure right composition. Over the shoulder shot, this shot is taken from the perspective of a person standing behind a subject with the person in the foreground shoulder and back of the head included in the shot. It's often used in dialogue scenes to create a sense of depth and connection between the characters. Point of view shot, this shot is taken from the perspective of a subject, showing what the subject would see. It helps the audience identify with the character's perspective and experience the scene from the character's viewpoint. Low angle shot, this shot looks at the subject from below, making it appear larger, more dominant or powerful. High angle shot, this shot looks at the subject from above, making it appear smaller or less significant. Eye level shot, a neutral camera angle that is approximately at the subject's eye level, creating a natural perspective. Dutch angle shot, a camera angle in which the camera is intentionally tilted to one side, creating a sense of disorientation or unease. Bird's eye view shot, a higher vantage point than an overhead shot, as if the viewer were looking down from the sky or a high altitude. It provides a wider perspective and can capture an entire scene or landscape, offering a sense of scale and context. Drone shot, an aerial camera angle using a drone that often provides higher perspectives than traditional bird's eye views and overhead views. Rule of thirds shot, in this composition technique, the frame is divided into nine equal parts and the subject is positioned along one or more of the grid lines to create a balanced and interesting composition. Candid shot, a shot taken without the subject's knowledge, often resulting in a more natural, relaxed look than post shots. Silhouette shot, the subject is backlit and the camera is exposed for the background, making the subject appear as a dark silhouette against a brighter background. These cameras are great for creating ultra-realistic photography effect on mid-journey. 
Without overcomplicating things, if you incorporate any of these cameras into your prompts, you will achieve great photorealism. However, if we want to achieve a cinematic watch and feel we need to add dedicated cinematic cameras with superior image quality, larger sensors, and advanced cinematic capabilities, in my explorations I found these cameras to deliver amazing cinematic results on mid-journey. Director name with unique visual style can make a massive difference in mid-journey. If you are looking to add some style and atmosphere to your images, you can add a filmmaker's name to your prompt. If you start with a simple prompt like this one, you will get very varied and random results. On the other hand, if you want to add, for example, the name of Quentin Tarantino to the same prompt, the results will be completely different and your images will be tinged with the style of this filmmaker through elements such as the scenery, the architecture, the clothes worn or sometimes more subtle ones such as the camera shots, the lighting, the colors and the general atmosphere. You can be even more precise and add the title of one of the director's movies. In this example, it could be Christopher Nolan's movie Memento. I have compiled a comprehensive list of 52 filmmakers, each possessing a unique visual style that can be replicated in mid-journey. These names have been sorted according to 11 film genres. You can find these directors and updated list of shot and camera types in the mid-journey AI photography style guide 2.0 in the description down below. Incorporating elements such as the movie year, genre, or movie name is optional, but when done correctly, they can definitely add tremendous value. The element of the movie year, for instance, can bring unique details from period films and art elements to your photos. There are two things you can do. First, you can visit a historical period with modern filmmaking production setup. I recommend this prompt for this job. I'd like to emphasize two critical aspects of this prompt. The usage of keywords such as cinematic scene and fictional historical drama is incredibly important. However, there's another element in the prompt that carries even more weight, costume design. The quality and historical accuracy of costumes can make or break historical period films. Therefore, I recommend using these keywords in your prompts for historical cinematic look. Second, you can play with production year of your imaginary movie to create a true retro look. This is as easy as adding a production year to the beginning of your prompt. And this is exactly where things started to get interesting. Because Mid-Journey allows you to create new cinematic universes from movies which never written and produced. To achieve this start your prompt with this. Mid-Journey is able to understand this name and construct a cinematic universe according to your creative vision for the genre you specify in the production year you want. For example, I created a new Harry Potter movie titled Harry Potter and the Vietnam War. This masterpiece, produced in the 2020, transports the Harry Potter universe to the era of the Vietnam War. I chose the action movie genre for this film. I am sharing with you the 10 cinematic genres with the most distinct visual looks, so you can experiment with creating your own fictional movies from different eras and across various genres. As always, you can find these genres in my style guide. It's hard to think of a cinematic shot without truly mastering action scenes and movement. When it comes to motion I have a list of highly effective keywords I like to use in my prompts to create smooth motion blur effect with flying particles around. I would also like to include names from the world of sports photography because who better to capture movement than sports photographers themselves. Of course you can also mention famous directors from action movies to inject their style to your images. My camera of choice for action scenes is either the Canon EOS 1DX Mark II or the Phantom High Speed Camera. I would particularly recommend using the Phantom High Speed Camera. These cameras are designed to capture extremely fast events at high resolution, and they can produce highly cinematic images, even in the midst of action which can be reproduced by mid-journey. Lighting in movies can change how a scene looks and feels dramatically. Here are some common cinematic lighting techniques and their effects. Low-key lighting, this is like having one bright light in a dark room. It creates lots of shadows and can make a scene feel tense or mysterious. It's often used in scary movies or thrillers. High-key lighting, this is the opposite of low-key lighting. The whole scene is well lit, so there aren't many shadows. It's often used in comedies or sitcoms and can make a scene feel upbeat or cheerful. Back lighting, rim lighting, these techniques make the person or object in the scene glow around the edges, helping them stand out from the background. This can make the character look important or heroic. Practical lighting, this means using lights that you can see in the scene, like a lamp or a neon sign. Depending on the light source, it can make the scene feel warm and cozy, or cool and vibrant. Motivated lighting, this type of lighting seems like it's coming from a natural source in the scene, like the sun through a window or a fireplace. One example, called Chiroscuro, uses a mix of light and dark to create a very stylized look. You can see it in movies like The Godfather. In short, the way a scene is lit can really change the mood and help tell the story of the film. 
and you can combine these techniques with some of the common lighting situations in photography to create extremely unique visuals. I highly encourage you to include keywords related to the emotional situations you want to induce in your audience within your prompts. You can inject emotions into your character's expressions or you can incorporate them into the entire scene. I made a list for you with keywords you can use in the emotion spectrum include suspense, sadness, anger, hope and more. You can find the full list of emotions in the style guide. Now I will show you how to create this parallax effect for your mid-journey images. For this job we will use a tool called LayerPix. After signing up to platform upload your photo. Once it's done LayerPix will process your image it will create this parallax animation. You can control the movement in the animation, change it to horizontal or vertical, change speed and focus point. Once you are satisfied with output, you can click on share and save it as GIF, MP4 or in more format. You can also directly post it on social media. I will link this tool in the description down below so you can check it out. After releasing my video on Photoshop's generative fill, many of you asked about a free alternative for enlarging and automatically filling images without needing a Creative Cloud account. Just last night, I stumbled upon an AI tool named Uncrop. It's good at converting your images from vertical to horizontal format, or vice versa, and it's free. All you need to do is visit their website and upload your image. Once you've selected your desired image size, Uncrop will use AI to automatically enlarge and fill your image, generating a few alternatives for you to choose from. You can then select the version that suits you best and download it. I'll include the link to this tool in the description below for you to explore. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. If you want to learn more about creating AI art with Meet Journey and everything AI related click here.